we'll try to understand a concept called journaling, which is a solution from MongoDB as far as durability is concerned. Okay. Now, let me give you a quick overview of journaling. What is journaling? After this, we will take a short break. First, let me just uh, let me cover this section. There is a reason. Okay. First, look into this, the diagram which is at on the left. Okay. How MongoDB write operation works? The moment you uh, fire some write operation, right? MongoD, the process MongoD, it it posts those write operations into your memory, which is creates a shared view. Why does it call shared? It's called shared because it actually have a memory mapping with your actual disk. So let's say your data file is kept at data DB, right? And it has a memory mapping with your shared. So whatever the working sets of or whatever the, you know data is there or size of your uh, allocated size of your process is there, right? It has a ma mapping. Okay. So it first push all the data to your memory, and after a specified um, interval it flashes those data to your memory which is called a flash you know flash disk and which occurs every 60 seconds it occurs also in the background user is not impacted this option is called no journal option that means what might happen in this particular case is say for example there is a 60 seconds delay to get to save the data from your memory to your disk correct for example there is a uh, abrupt shutdown happens, right? Oh, okay, at any point of time. What might happen is whatever data which are there in at that point of time, whatever data is there in your memory will not be, um, you, you cannot retrieve that. It will be lost. Okay, so that's the problem with the durability. To enhance that, MongoDB provides a solution called journaling. Okay. Before the version, uh, before the version 2.4.10, I remember journaling was disabled by default. You had to actually start your MongoDB with uh, journaling enabled. But now onwards, 2.6.10 onwards, or oh, uh, right, 2.6.2.4.10 uh, onwards, they have enabled journaling by default. So, if you remember in our case. Let's say if you see the our uh, the moment we have actually started the MongoD process, right? The mo the moment I started the MongoD process, you would have seen one comment called journal directory. This so journal directory is nothing but it's a child directory inside your data directory. So for example, in in our case, the data directory is Rana to custom data. So journal directory is this. By default, it is enabled. Uh, now onwards. Okay. What is journaling? Journaling is, if you see the diagram on the right, it actually creates a private view as well. Okay. How it works? So, it, you know, whatever, whenever, it, <coughs> sorry, whenever a write operation occurred in through MongoD, it creates those um, changes in the private view. Okay. So, for example, you have inserted one record. So, that changes is there in the private view. So the first block is memory and the second block is my disk. So it gets gets written here in the private view, number one. Then after a specified interval, which is called a journal commit interval, by default it is 200 milliseconds, the private view writes those operations, not the data, mind that, not the data, the operations, the write operations in the journal directory, which is inside the disk. Okay. So it's written here. Then, when once the journal commit happens, right, MongoDB, you know, push this data to the shared view, right? Now, from shared view onwards, it was it was the you know previous process itself. From shared view, over, after every 60 seconds, it gets written to the actual data directory. So these processes are always happening in the background. User are totally unimpacted. Now the advantage that what we are getting is we have reduced this cycle of 60 seconds to 200 milliseconds. 
for example any abrupt shutdown happens um, at any point of time and you know you have not have a flash disk for last 59 seconds for example okay so whatever data which is there in your uh, journal directory or the write operations whichever there in your journal directory the moment you restart your mongod next time it basically replay all those write operational log and write it into the data directory the actual data directory so how it works from mongod to private view private view with journal commit comes to uh, journal directory the only the operations not the actual data from the op uh, you know once the commit is happening the same operation is being replayed into the shared view after 60 second flash disk happens okay so the moment it gets it gets flushed to the disk whatever data is processed already those data is get, is get, you know is mm, uh, marked as processed in the journal directory so that means after every 60 seconds it checks that okay these are the data i am i have already copied so you can remove it from journal or mark those things as processed something of that kind that's how it worked okay so this is little bit um, complex so just let me know if this is clear Liu is saying journaling is something like a log. Um, yeah, so basically it creates a write operational uh, operations log to increase the durability. <coughs> journaling is temporary storage. Yeah, you can say like that as well, Bhavish. So it's only a write operational log. It keeps uh, appending in the journal directory. Apoorv is saying the shared view has the operations and not the data. No, shared view has the data, but journal directory has the operations. So how it works is, say for example, you are writing something without uh, this thing, uh, without journaling, right? Whatever you write here, you it gets written here. Okay, but it's it has a memory mapping, so you know that in which location you are actually writing that data. Okay, Leo is saying, uh, what is the link between private view and shared view? Right, good question. I am just coming to that, Leo. So basically, what happens is, after this uh, commit happens, right? It has marked as processed in the journal directory, and the current view of the shared view and the private view, it always try to do another mapping between the sh uh, shared view and the private view. It's just a mapping, no data sharing. Bhavesh is saying, uh, okay, okay, the same thing, yeah. So is uh, okay, right. Abhijit is saying not very clear. Okay, uh, Rajiv is saying, but where is the data in case of system crashes? Shared view is RAM, correct? Yes. So all the blue things are in RAM, okay, and this uh, saffron is basically your disk. So what happens is Rajiv. Say for example, if your system crashes, right? Then, then for example, you have not, you know, flashed your data to your data directory, okay? But those write operations are there in the journal directory. Restart or recover from the um, abrupt shutdown next time. Then MongoD will reprocess or applies those write operations to the data directory. That's how it worked. From the from the uh, from the journal directory to the data directory. So, but uh, uh, now you can you can tell me that you know if, for example it might so happen that the crash happens uh, even before this journal commit happens. So in that case you will lose those data which are there uh, in you know which are actually appended within that 200 milliseconds. Okay, so Rajiv. Okay, let me reiterate. Yeah, journal directory will have the operations and not the actual data. So, for example, if some crash happens, right? So it has got okay operations in the sense obviously operations in the sense the operations with uh, what is the update on which table? What is the insert on which table? Not the actual data. So that means, say for example, insert one is. Collection is actually happening in collection one, and this is the object, something of that kind. Not the collection one data is there in the journal directory. Are you getting my point, Rajiv? So 
in the journal directory what we keep writing is it we keep writing the actual operation our operation in the sense say for example whatever command you type db dot class dot insert and inside that something right so it's an insert operation inserting this data into the um, class operation so the, so the class operation does not actually stay the class collection is not um, residing inside journal directory but that operation is residing here so rajiv did, uh, is that clear now okay he said okay okay then abhijit is saying not very clear i am coming to abhijit uh, let me see leo is saying is there a delay using journal yes leo that's right even the same question murli is also saying uh, will it impact performance yes absolutely uh, that's uh, that's a um, performance uh, issue obviously so for example <coughs> there is something called write concern after this only we will go over that write concern and um, we will I'll, I'll just you know let you know that what write concern is and you know what uh, you can do with write concern and how the performance can be tweaked so for the time being you just uh, think of like that there are options to even if you are um, using journal but you can actually have that journaling in the background as an asynchronous process and not uh, doing anything in in uh, you know in your operation synchronously so leo uh, is asking that whether it is recommended yes it is recommended journaling is recommended even in production also okay there are also options you know if we can reduce that performance this thing so uh, that is there as i said we have something called right concern i'll just come to it after after this okay um, so don't worry uh, bhavesh is asking is 200 millisecond configure configurable in journal yes bhavesh so that journal commit interval right 200 millisecond it can be configurable there is an option called minus minus journal commit interval okay you can specify that so 200 mils the journal commit interval can be from um, can be from uh, 3 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds okay uh, it can be from 3 milliseconds to 300 it all depends on your non functional requirement how frequent writes are happening to your application how you want to how frequent you want to write to your journal directory and stuff like that Okay, if you do not have a write heavy application, then probably you can you want to keep it a little bit higher in the 300 millisecond range, for example. But let's say you want to have a very high uh, write heavy applications, high writes are going on, so probably you might want to uh, you know uh, reduce the journal commit interval to let's say uh, 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds. So every 10 milliseconds you go and write that to your journal directory. Okay, so those options are there and those are all non-functional requirements. All the flexibilities are being are given, uh, but <coughs> you know, you have to use it as far as this thing is concerned. So, Apoor uh, is asking private view also holds data or operations. No, private view um, holds the actual uh, data because private view is mapped with uh, shared view, right? So it has the data it has the operation so the moment you send the data to shared view and then shared view it it also has this mapping with private view right and then shared view flushes that to the data directory so abhijit i'll just repeat the process once again so what happens in case of journal the moment you have some write operation through mongod right that gets written to the share private view first okay after some interval which is called journal commit interval this the write the same write operation is um, written to your journal directory okay only the operations and not the actual data so the data is still there in your memory okay but the operation has been written to your disk Apoor is saying uh, okay now it's clear okay okay got it okay so the operation is being written here but the, the data still is in memory then what happens is once the commit is happening here right then uh, and you know then you have you replay the same thing in your shared view right and then what happens after the flash disk interval which is let's say 60 second by default the actual data get flashed to your data directory okay so what is happening is instead of writing the data directly from mongod through memory to uh, data directory it come across this this path 
okay what is the advantage we are gaining a widget with the advantage we are gaining here is for example if there is any crash uh, server crash happens right and uh, you have not have um, your data you know, you know, to be written or to be flushed to your data directory for some time. Okay, let's say for some 59 seconds or 58 seconds. Okay, some for some time it has not get flushed. Okay, uh, and your server has got has crashed. Then what will happen is the next time when your server is restarting, your MongoDB will check your journal directory first. It will check that okay, some data is there in the journal directory, so I need to recover. I need to, it will recover the right operations, it will replay those right operations into the data directory and then it starts. So if you would have seen this <coughs> in the server itself, if you see it says that journal directory and then it says recover no journal files present, so no recovery needed. So every time you start your MongoD, right, it checks the journal directory first and then it says that whether it, it, there is any journal files present. If there is something present, then it will recover that, like that. Is that clear now, Avijit? Avijit, is that clear now? Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rajiv is saying, did you create journal manually or it's by default? It is automated and it is by default. So as I said Rajiv, uh, before 2.4.10 version, um, MongoDB, uh, you know, while you know, you know, MongoDB journaling option was not by default, we had to uh, start MongoDB process with journaling enabled. But starting from 2.4.10 version, it has uh, enabled the journaling by default. But let's say you want to, you know, disable journaling, then there is another option called minus minus no journal. Okay, in that case, journaling will not be enabled. But it is always recommended to have journaling enabled. <coughs> 